Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, for this week's challenge, it's breakfast baking. So I'm gonna be making a Danish. So I'm gonna make my own puff pastry, my own filling, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to start out with one package of yeast. This stuff was very hard to find. We went to like three or four stores and none of them had it. And I finally found it, which was really nice. Um, but a lot of people are making bread, I guess. So I'm gonna take this and it says to use two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Um, it can be active, dry or instant, but it says it's just one standard packet, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and measure this just to be safe. I'm gonna grab some scissors. Whenever I was little, I always liked it whenever we went to hotels or whatever, because whenever you get the, like the continental breakfast that they always have, they always have like the cheese Danish or the cherry or whatever the other fillings are and those were always my favorite and i was like i get to eat this for breakfast it's like dessert so today i'm making my own and i can eat it for whatever meal i want okay and then to this i'm going to add some warm water um it says a quarter cup of warm water between 100 and 110 degrees fahrenheit uh, i'm just gonna use warm water from the sink speaking of water yes my hair is wet i just washed it I didn't feel like drying it or anything, and I don't have enough time today to just let it air dry before I film the video. But at least you know I'm clean. <laughs> All right, and to this I'm also, I'm going to add some sugar. How much? One tablespoon of sugar. Do I mix this? Yes, I'm going to whisk this. Just gonna use the little whisk attachment from our stand mix, from our electric mixer, I mean, because the big one is just too big. Now I'm just gonna cover this and set this to the side for five minutes until it is foamy on top. So, all right, so I have 14, well, this is 16. I'm gonna cut a couple tablespoons off, but I'm gonna take 14 tablespoons of butter and cut it into cubes. I'm sorry, cut it into a quarter inch slices. And then I'm gonna put that into the food processor. So here are my first eight tablespoons. All right, and six more. These two are going back in the fridge. They don't get to join the pastry party. Let's see, what's next? Okay, so next is gonna be two and a half cups of flour. I am potentially screwing this recipe up because I'm using gluten-free flour instead of regular flour and it calls for whole milk, but I am using oat milk. So maybe that's a bad idea, I don't know. But that's what I'm doing because I don't want any gluten and I don't want any dairy. I didn't think about the dairy part. Well, we're just gonna pretend that this is non-dairy butter and that way mentally it will still be dairy free. I always forget about the butter. I always am like, yeah, replace the milk, replace the milk. And then the butter is just kind of there. And it's like, hello, we're dairy too. Yes, butter, I acknowledge you. And I appreciate you as a part of the dairy community, but I also forget about you. So it's okay. Anyways, two and a quarter cups of flour. And I'm gonna set this to the side because I will be using it later for rolling this out and kneading it and all that kind of stuff. I'm making the mess. Okay, so I'm just gonna plug this in first and then I'm going to pulse the blender a few times. It says 12 to 15 times until butter is crumbled into pea-sized balls. So. crumbled. I don't know that it's really pea-sized. Also, I'm only operating on one camera today, so this might be a little awkward with the tripod situation, but it's like all crumbled and stuff. I don't know if that's really pea-sized. 
but I'm just gonna go with it and say that it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour this into my yeast. So let's see if we have bubbles. There, I mean, it's not like super, super foamy, but there are bubbles in the middle, right there, and around the edges and stuff. So I think that'll be good. Sorry, I have to check and make sure that I'm gonna be in the frame where I'm standing. All right, so I'm going to just add this right into this bowl. Very gently fold everything together. Fold just until the dry ingredients are moistened. This isn't like, like it's just crumbly. Is it supposed, it's supposed to stick together, yeah? <gasps> I forgot. I did not read all of step two. I was supposed to put the yeast in and the sugar in the water, let it get foamy, then whisk in the remaining sugar, milk, egg, and salt. Then do the flour. I'm going to try and try and fix this. I'm gonna grab another bowl and mix the wet ingredients that I mixed together and then I'll pour it in here and continue gently folding. So a half cup of milk. I can't believe I didn't even, cause like step two is the part where it tells you what to do with the yeast. And then afterwards it says, if the surface doesn't have bubbles on the top, after 15 minutes, start over with a fresh packet of yeast. So I just kind of read the first part of that sentence and assumed that this is telling you what to do if the first yeast doesn't work. And I didn't realize there was a sentence at the end that was important. So we will see how this goes. Sugar is going to be a quarter cup minus the one tablespoon that I took out earlier. So about a quarter cup. And then the egg, it's just one egg. And then salt, and it is one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just going to use the same whisk from earlier and just mix that together real quick. My neighbors are mowing their lawn. So. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour this back into this bowl and then fold it all together. There we go. Now it's starting to look more like a dough and yes, less like just flour and butter. Okay, it's like mostly mixed together. I just, I don't, I really don't want to over mix it. I've messed up enough already on like the first part. So now I think I'm going to put that out onto, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to put that out into some plastic wrap and then chill it for a little bit. And then I'm just going to fold these edges over the top. So now I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. <sighs> it says for at least four hours and up to 48 hours. I work all day tomorrow, so I don't think I'm going to do the 48 hours thing. Um, so I'm just gonna put it in there for like four hours. It's the minimum, but that's what we're going with. So I'm just gonna throw it in the refrigerator and I'll see you guys in four hours with drier hair. <laughs> it has been a little bit more than four hours and I just pulled this out of the refrigerator and now I'm going to roll it and fold it over and yeah, that kind of stuff. So got my rolling pin and my flour and it says it's going to be pretty sticky so I'm supposed to very generously flour the surface. Since I only have one camera and I would imagine you guys are more interested in watching what I'm doing rather than just watching me doing what I'm doing, I'm going to angle the camera down and kind of to the side to move you guys over here so you can see it better. You can't see me anymore, and I'm sorry. And wrap. Ah, it's falling apart. Is it supposed to do that? Well, I'm just gonna kinda try to smush it all together. This is not like dough, this is crumbly. I guess I'll try and roll it out. 
It says to roll it out into a 15 by eight um, inch rectangle. So I don't really know how big that's gonna be. I'm just gonna roll it out into a rectangle and hope that it's around that size. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it into thirds as if it were a business letter. So I'm gonna like fold this one up and fold that one up on top of it. But I feel like it's just gonna crumble. Like it's not sticky enough to just fold. Well, it kind of folded. And then try and stick it all together. Turn it clockwise and roll it out into a 15 inch long rectangle again. So I just re-roll it out. This is not pretty. Goodness, this is a mess. But we're gonna keep going. Okay, it's looking a little bit more like dough. It's getting a little bit stickier as it warms up. And I think I'm going to reflower because this is getting pretty sticky. I'm just gonna, eh. No, I'm just gonna break my dough is what I'm gonna do. And now I'm just gonna roll it and then do that one more time with the folding and everything. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this in plastic wrap again, and it's gonna just go back into the refrigerator for another hour, um, from one hour to 24 hours. So I'm just gonna do it for another hour. Don't break, don't break, don't break. Haha, -ha, it didn't break. There we go, back into the fridge. While that is in the refrigerator um, for the last hour, I'm gonna go ahead and make my filling. I'm gonna be doing a raspberry filling. It just sounded good. It was one of the links um, on the recipe I'm using for the dough. It was like, also try this filling and it sounded good. So that's what I'm using. It's a really simple recipe. Um, I'm gonna start out with one tablespoon of water and then two teaspoons of cornstarch and I'm just gonna mix them together in this bowl. It has to be warm water. Don't remember if I said that or not. All right, here is the water and the cornstarch. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump over the stove and get the raspberries going. So in this, um, in this saucepan, I have two and a half cups of raspberries and then three tablespoons of just granulated sugar. And I'm gonna let it cook until the raspberries start to break down. Um, so it's gonna be about four minutes, the recipe said. Okay, now that that is pretty broken down as far as the raspberries go, I'm gonna go ahead and add my cornstarch mixture in. And then I'm gonna stir that and let that um, simmer for about three more minutes until it starts to thicken. So now that that's thickened, it's still simmering a little bit, but I'm just gonna turn the heat off and just leave this out at room temperature um, just to kind of thicken and come together. And I'm just gonna leave it out until I pull my dough out and I'm ready to fill it. So uh, I will see you guys then. An hour later, I just pulled this out of the refrigerator and I'm gonna cut it in half because you only use half for like one braided Danish thing and then you can use the other half to make a second one. I think I'm just gonna freeze the second half though because I don't really need two Danishes because they're gonna be like long ones. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. And then I'm gonna take this half out and the other half I'm just gonna stick back in the freezer. So for this half, I'm going to flour this counter again. I've used so much flour today. And 
I'm gonna roll it out into a 12 by eight inch rectangle. And just because I wanna do this right, I'm gonna measure it. Okay, so that's about eight inches wide. So now I just need to get 12 inches. Yeah, it's sticking. I completely forgot to put flour on my rolling pin. That was a stupid decision. All right, now I'm going to transfer this into a baking sheet and I have it lined with parchment paper. I'm gonna try and do this without getting flour all over the baking sheet. Maybe this is a bad plan. These stay together. Try this trick, I've never done this before. Where you like roll it up on your rolling pin. This could be a bad idea. Hey, it worked, look at that. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this counter off so that I have room to work. So I'm supposed to cut two of these corners off here. And then from this end, it's not quite <laughs> perfectly straight, but from this end, I'm supposed to cut two triangles. I don't, maybe something like that. I have no idea. That's just what it says to do. And now I'm going to, those triangles are not even. It's okay. I'm gonna take my filling, which is now cooled. It's just room temperature. Not sure about all the seeds in here, but I'm just gonna uh, put half of this. I should have thought ahead and just made a half batch of this, of the dough and of the filling, but, um, so I'm gonna spread half of it. Yeah. You're gonna spread half of the filling in the middle. Like so. And then I'm going to cut some strips on both sides. And then I'm just going to start folding. I think I'm gonna fold this over like that. And then I'll start folding these over alternating sides um, to make it look braided. I should have put the filling going down a little bit farther. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more filling on here. Just so that there's not like an end piece that doesn't have any filling in it. I'm gonna dump it right there. Okay and then fold the rest of these over. And then I'm just gonna fold this end and just kinda tuck it all together. And now I'm going to make an egg wash and brush it over the top of this. Also, I forgot to preheat my oven, so I'm gonna do that to 400 degrees right now before I do the egg wash. Okay, now the egg wash. It's going to be one egg. And then two tablespoons of milk, again, using oat milk. And then I'm just gonna mix all that together. And now I'm just going to use this brush and brush it over the top of my Danish. So now that I have this all done, I'm gonna actually throw it in the refrigerator. My oven is still on low, it's still preheating. It could take a while. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and keep it chilled until the oven is preheated. My oven is now preheated, so it's at 400 degrees, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there um, for 16 to 20 minutes until it is nice and golden brown on top. All right, the timer just went off, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the oven, see if it's done. Ooh, that smells good. 
Look at that. Ah, if I don't drop it. There it is. I think it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. And there it is. I think it looks pretty. It did puff up, you can tell. That was one thing I was concerned about, was that it, my puff pastry wouldn't puff, but it did, so we're all good. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you like and comment and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.